We present Bark, learning to regress 3D dog shape from images by exploiting breed information. Our goal is to reconstruct detailed, realistic 3D dogs represented as 3D meshes directly from monocular images. This is challenging for several reasons. Dogs vary a lot in pose. They vary a lot in shape. It's hard to 3D scan dogs because of their fur and hard to get them to stay still. So how can we learn to estimate 3D dog shapes? We observe that dogs have been bred to have specific characteristics, including shape. In lieu of detailed 3D information, our idea is to use the breed relationships as a form of side information. Specifically, we exploit breed labels that come with the Stanford Extra Image dataset. We know that dogs of the same breed generally look more alike than dogs that belong to different breeds. This provides a form of supervision that a neural network can use to learn to regress 3D dog shapes from a single image. In fact, we exploit breed information in multiple ways and call a resulting method BARK. We show that BARK produces state-of-the-art results. Our network takes a single image of a dog as input and regresses its 3D shape and pose. The network is split into a pose branch, which uses a stacked hourglass to predict 2D key points and segmentation masks, and a shape branch. Training is guided by a set of losses. Some of these losses encourage consistency with the available 2D annotations. Some of them are weak 3D priors that help the network cope with missing or ambiguous evidence. And some of them ensure consistency between the reprojection of our 3D prediction and the image evidence. Our main novelty, though, comes from utilizing breed information. We introduce three breed-related losses. One of them is optional and can be used if breed-specific 3D models are available for some breeds. The other two losses work together and are summarized as the breed similarity loss. We learn a latent shape space, here denoted by the dark blue box, in which dogs that are more similar in shape lie closer together than dogs with different shapes. A triplet loss on the latent shape encoding, Z, together with a classification loss, is sufficient to support the construction of a latent space with the desired properties. Here we project instances of the latent vector Z into a 2D plot. This plot shows the result when we don't use the breed similarity loss. The dots correspond to specific instances of dogs and the colors indicate their clade. Different saturation levels indicate different breeds. The t SNE plot illustrates how cluttered the latent space is and that the breed shapes are not well separated when we don't use a breed similarity loss. When training with breed losses, however, a clear structure emerges. We see clusters of dogs of the same breed and furthermore, breeds of the same clade are located near each other. Let's see how well Bark works. Previous work has mainly evaluated accuracy in terms of how well the reprojection of a predicted 3D model matches 2D annotations. For example, prior work uses intersection over union, or IOU score for the silhouettes and the percentage of correct key points, or PCK score for key points. While Bark is more accurate than current state-of-the-art methods in terms of both measures, these don't fully capture the quality of the predicted 3D shape. Consequently, we propose two methods to evaluate 3D shape. First, we perform a perceptual study in which we ask Amazon Mechanical Turk workers to evaluate relative perceptual correctness of predicted dog shapes. We compare our method to the previous state-of-the-art method called Waldo. Study participants judge our 3D shapes to be more representative of the breed by significant margin, 92.4% versus 7.6%. Second, we complement the perceptual evaluation by a 3D breed prototype consistency evaluation. For 19 out of 20 breeds, Bark has lower error than Waldo. To evaluate and understand how the breed losses contribute to the accuracy, we evaluate them separately. We start with a baseline network that is trained with all losses except the breed losses. We then add breed similarity loss, which consists of a classification and triplet loss, and compare the new results to the baseline. Participants rate the method trained with breed similarity loss as producing shapes more representative of the breed shape. In the next step, we add the 3D breed loss and compare to the version with only the breed similarity loss. Again, participants rate the new model as more accurate, 60.4% versus 39.6% for the previous network. A breed prototype consistency evaluation leads to the same result. Bark outperforms the ablated versions. Here we show some visual results. Compare the top row, which shows results when not using breed losses, with the bottom row, where you can see results for the full bark model. Adding our breed losses leads to significant improvement in 3D shape. Next, we show Waldo results on the left. Bark on the right produces much more realistic 3D shapes. The key takeaway from this project is that even though learning 3D shapes is hard, we can still achieve good results by exploiting side information.